Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Tanks Blitz. We're going to be doing another review here. <coughs> yes, another one. Um, so, what we're going to be reviewing today, uh, we're going to be reviewing this thing, which is the Hargo, which is the Tier 2, well, one of the Tier 2 Japanese uh, light tanks. Yes, well, it's the only Tier 2 light tank right now of Japan. And why have I got this tank? Well, it's not because it's a particularly great tank, um, but it's because it looks qu it looks cute, <laughs> honestly. Um, and that's the only reason that I really got this thing, uh, because it looks cute, and the Japanese have really good camouflage patterns. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a, a tier two tank, and we haven't seen a tier two tank review for a long time. So yeah, we're going to be doing another one. So. What is this tank like? Well, it's only got 4% protection, 16% firepower, 51% shot effectiveness, and 59% maneuverability. Um, so what does that mean? Well, the Tetrarch has got a 7% protection, 13% firepower, 57% shot effectiveness, 59% maneuverability. So it's not quite as good as the Tetrarch, apparently. But then uh, that is because I do not have the upgraded turret. This is, in fact, the stock turret. But it's the more historically accurate turret, and also it's the turret which I prefer the look of, um, which you will see if I mount this thing, which is the Type 4 Kino, which is this. And this is the upgraded turret of it. However, I prefer the Type 95 Hargo turret rather than the Type 4 Kino, which is in fact a different tank altogether. Um, but yeah, so let's just load all of them. So, <coughs> let's head into it then. So, it's got 280 HP, which, uh, well, let's look at the T7 combat car. It's got 290. This thing's got 265 with more HP, so without it, it's like 210, which is tiny. Panzer II has got 315. Uh, not including this, it's got 300. So, yeah. The Tetrarch, as we saw, has got 270. Uh, the D1 the light tank, it's got 300. So it does not have the most HP with the stock turret, but with the upgraded turret, it has got 320 HP, which brings it in line with um, some with the other tanks at the tier. But without with the stock with that, uh, blah. with the stock turret, it's not got as much HP. But with the upgraded turret, it does have more HP uh, than its peers. Um, so. The armor, however, is not great at all. Um, 25, uh, sorry, not 25, 12 frontal hull uh, and side hull armor, 10 for the rear armor, 12 frontal turret, side and rear, so 12 around the turret, 12, 12, and 10. It's really not armored at all. The Japanese sort of did not care about armor for some reason. With the upgraded turret, which is the Type 4 Kino, uh, the turret armor actually goes up to 35, front with 25 sides and rear so the turret is impenetrable with this tank with the upgraded turret but with the stock turret it's a terrible 12 millimeters as is the hull as well so unless you go hull down with the upgraded turret um, there's not really much uh, you can do to stop things from easily penetrating your tank um, so yeah that's not great however the maneuverability is decent 7.35 tons is all this thing weighs, and it's got 135 horsepower engine, which means it does go at a speedy kilometer, 40 kilometers per hour, with a 45 degrees per second traverse speed and a 36 degrees per second turret traverse speed with the uh, stock turret. With the upgraded turret, it's got 36 degrees, which is all right, um, which is about the same. It is the same, actually. Yes, it is. Uh, but the, tra the whole traverse goes slightly down. But it's still a very maneuverable tank. So the mobility is decent, which is what I think the Japanese philosophy was. It was to create fast, light tanks, a bit like the German tanks, which are speedy, um, relying more on speed than armor. Well, the Panzer II's got a nice balance of it, because you know, Panzer II. Um, but yeah, so there's the maneuverability. As for the engine, 15% chance of foreign impact. 35 degrees per second, uh, 35, 135 horsepower. Uh, yeah, load limit of 10 tons, so you've still got a, a way. Um, you've still got a way before you uh, reach your load limit, so you can mount whatever the hell you want. Um, 
as for view range 242 meters which is decent enough um, but now we come to the gun now the standard gun that you get which is the 37 millimeter gun type 94 which uh, is an all right gun but it's only got 33 uh, average penetration which is not that great the upgraded 37 millimeter gun is a type 98 millimeter gun um, sorry type 98 to 37 millimeter and that has got 40 average penetration which is pretty good um, the Panzer 2 has got 39 um, what else is there that's got like 41 uh, Tetrarch has got a lot of penetration because it's got this fantastic two pounder it's got 94 pen uh, D1 has got 46 so it brings it more in line with its competitors um, it's still maybe on a little bit of the lacking side with armor piercing but it's a decent enough gun uh, it does have an 18.43 rate of fire rounds per minute uh, 59 average pen with a uh, with premium AP, uh, 18 with high explosive. So yeah, that's pretty useless. Although it works on hardos at least. Um, average damage is only 40. It's only a little 37 millimeter. 36 with uh, premium AP, which isn't actually that much for downgrade with the nerf to uh, premium ammo. Um, 50 with high explosive. So I mean, you can always just like you can always sort of take 10. AP and then like 10 high explosives because you know high explosives so let's do that why not um, oh. and then as for the rest of the gun stats uh, you've got 0.37 accuracy which isn't that great honestly it's pretty bad accuracy um, not as bad as the Russian 122s at least but it's still not bit lacking that dispersion as for the aim time 4.5 seconds that's pretty standard that's pretty good actually for bullets um, so yeah pretty good aim time there but that is not the only gun choice you get you do of course get the option to mount the 57 millimeter gun type 97 which is more of a howitzer than anything else um, so it has a 10.08 rate of fire which is fairly slow um, it has got 38 average pen with armor piercing 55 with heat however it's got 28 with high explosive due to it being the larger caliber um, the average damage 90 with AP uh, 78 with heat and 110 with high explosive so that's really this is really the derp gun the tier 2 derp, derp gun that you can mount um, the dispersion goes way up though however uh, 0.47 which is horrible horribly inaccurate with a pretty terrible 5.6 second aim time but it's always an option so if you're more of a derp gun person then you can go with the 57 but if not you go with the 37 uh, millimeter gun and uh, there's not much of an upgrade tree really you've got the upgraded turret the better 37 millimeter and then you've got the derp gun uh, on the Renault Ostu uh, you unlock this 37 which is used uh, on the Chino more and then you've got this uh, 13 millimeter actually no that's the uh, stock gun stock gun for the Hargo um, but then you've of course got this 13 millimeter auto cannon which you mount on the Chini um, but anyway, yeah. So that is pretty much the stats for the gut for the tank. It's a very speedy tank. It's more of a flanker. Um, speed is your ally. Speed is your defense, really. Uh, speed and maneuverability. That's what you're relying on there. Uh, the gun is decent. It's an all right gun. Uh, the Japanese have always had uh, pretty good tank guns, honestly. If I if I think if I think of what's the most standing out thing to me for low tier Japanese tanks it's probably the gun quality they do have some of the best tank guns uh, at low tiers for example the uh, Chinukai aka the um, Shinobi has got a very good 75mm uh, anti-tank gun on that um, but down here that's a pretty good 37mm uh, and of course once again I'm using the stock turret because it looks cuter <laughs> and uh, I just prefer the look of it even if it's not the best gun um, as for equipment, you're probably going to want the gun rammer or perhaps even the calibrated shells. Get up to 42 average pen with armor piercing. Um, but eh, that's only an upgrade of two, so it's not really that much of an increase. Um, but you got the gun rammer, so you're going to want that. Protective modules for the 10% to protection of engine, transmission, and ammo rack, and 10% to suspension and fuel tank durability. So you might as well go with that. Improved optics, uh, you could go with Caminet. Uh, but it's up to you whether you want to go coated optics or camera uh, then I would say supercharge for the extra shell velocity and the uh, 
minus 30% uh, penetration decrease with distance. Um, then I would say improved assembly for better hit points because, well, 12 millimeters frontal hull, uh, 12 millimeters maximum hull is really not going to benefit to 5%. It may go up by like 1%, but then that'll be it. So, yeah. Wouldn't say enhanced armor, go with improved assembly. Uh, then I would say engine accelerator, because you don't really need a better traverse speed, so definitely go engine accelerator. Uh, then I would go with refined gun uh, for the better accuracy to 0.35, which is more acceptable. Uh, then your choice of enhanced tracks or toolbox, and then you've got uh, your choice of whatever the hell those two things are. As for ammunition, you do carry 120 rounds, which is enough to get you through any tier 2 battle, I'd imagine. Uh, they're not going to last that long. So, yeah, uh, probably want to carry around a good amount of uh, premium armor-piercing rounds. Uh, you only get the slight damage decrease. Uh, as you can see, 30, 27, 50, 45. There's not really that much of a difference there, but, yeah. Uh, for lightly armored tank destroyers, or indeed other uh, Hargos, you can always go with the... Uh, 37mm high explosives, so take some of that as well. So, I mean, you've got rounds to spare. It's not like you're really snatching up your rounds there. <laughs> so, yeah, go with your choice of ammunition. Uh, as for provisions, you've got standard fuel for plus 3% engine power turret traverse, and you've got white rice for 3% to crew mastery. Then you've got the protective kit, 15% to protection of crew from injuries, 10% speed of module repair, 20% fire protection, and 10% ammo and fuel tank durability. So you got them, we'll go ahead and mount some of them if you want, and then you've got the consumables, which is of course the standard repair, first aid, fire extinguisher. Then you've got engine power boost, 20% to engine power for 15 seconds. You've got tornado energy, aka adrenaline rush, which is, uh, well, ju or just adrenaline, which is 20% to load speed, 10% chance of damaging enemy vehicle modules for 15 seconds. Then you've got multi-purpose restoration pack, which is these three things rolled into one. Um, and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I go with the three standard. I can't be bothered to say why I don't use that and a couple of these, but yeah. Um, so yeah, there's your choice of consumables. As for the crew, can't really say much because Blitz does crew skills differently because you know crew skills. Um, but yeah, so overall, it's a very speedy, nippy tier two uh, little light tank. Speed is definitely your ally. It's got a pretty good. Uh, 37mm tank gun on it, and uh, well, the Japanese do have some of my favourite um, camouflage patterns in the game. Uh, this works pretty well on some tanks. Uh, this is definitely my favourite summer one. Uh, as for winter, I definitely do like this uh, cherry blossom. Uh, Mountain Silence is alright, but uh, it's a bit too black, a uh, bit too much white. Uh, whitewash pattern. No, I don't really like the whitewash. Uh, as for the desert, they've got some pretty good uh, desert camouflages. So, yeah. Japanese have definitely got some of the best uh, looking camouflage patterns. But, yeah. Anyway, that is the Hargo. Thank you for watching and goodbye.